Isn't that exciting? This is a new era, and that leads us right into the second point of the covenant. We, after translation, we need to think about different kinds of publication. There are all kinds of innovative ways. In my hand right there, you can see a source view Bible. It's a new format where the text is laid out, so the narrator is always black, God is in red, the lead character is in green, and everyone else is in blue. This particular Bible uh, is a scripture portion. It's the Gospel of Mark. It's in Spanish, and this a cop one copy just like this is what uh, Lauren and Darlene and Alejandro Rodriguez and Giacomo and I had the privilege to give uh, to Pope um, Francis in late last year. So he's reading the Bible as published by YWAMers, okay? Lots of different things that can be done. These are amazing times, aren't they, Jill? They are. We have a, there we go. I've, I switched to the Madonna microphone. Isn't she look amazing? Let's hear it for Jill. Come on, let's hear it for Jill. Yeah, it's, it's so I feel more free to do my interpretive dance a little bit later, so. <laughs> yes, very amazing times. And way to name drop the Pope in there, David. Really awesome. He can do that now, it's crazy. Um, yes, amazing times that we live in. So some of the things that we've already uh, seen, I mean, over the last several centuries, it's been print Bible. That's, that's the way that we get the Bible out there. But we've got print, audio, video, digital now. And like Ken just said, it was such a key phrase. It's never been easier to get the Bible out. And so, uh, so this leads us to publication, uh, uh, printing the Bible or distributing it digitally. One of the amazing experiences I had just recently, I was in South Africa, and I met a pr young man from Nigeria on the street. And I said, where in our Nigeria are you from? And he started to tell me, and I said, just a moment. And I pulled out my, um, my iPhone, and I went to my Jesus film app. And I said, hit on the country, and I, he said, which language do you speak? There was a list, and he clicked on it. I said, you do you want to hear something? And I turned, and this is how I did evangelism. I spread my feet, and I held my iPhone like this, and it started Jesus film. <laughs> you know, there are 1,300 languages of Jesus film available on your, on your devices for free. If you don't have the Jesus film app on your phone, what are you doing with your time right now? Just go ahead and download it, okay? And see if we can crash the system. We probably will. So th there's an amazing opportunity. There's so many ways. When I was doing this and showing it to him, his eyes got big. He said, do you know what it says? It says that God made the heavens and the earth. I said, yes. And, says, and he made all these good things. He said, yes. I said, you don't need to translate for me. I know the story. And he said... <laughs> We live in absolutely incredible times. And Jesus Film, as you saw in the partnership, is, has made all kind of changes in their organization to come closer to the things that they're hearing from us. They only used to do translations for 50,000, a million, 100,000, 50,000, now for any size. And they're just right now are making agreements to make a YWAM an official one of the, this is an exceptional thing, one of the f official publishers of Jesus Film. So if we take their script and we t produce it in a language, they will recognize it as an official Jesus Film and put it on their apps. They're not doing this for other people. They're saying, we want to partner with you. Isn't that amazing? The very first Jesus Film YWAM joint training was held a month ago in Kona. We had about 20-some YWAMers. Vi, who you saw, uh, uh, earlier, and Jackson Indicek from Cameroon led that from our part. And Jackson has this amazing story to tell us. Yes, so once again, because Jackson is an African man, I will be reading this letter on behalf of him. <laughs> it's kind of fun though, right? Yeah. All right, quick letter from Jackson. We just finished an eight day fire hose training adventure with Jesus Film. My takeaways, anyone can do this. Anyone can host and multiply this partnership training in their own location. I've never been this excited in my life. 
The training was like a mini DTS with a three-team focus. Team number one takes care of the Jesus film script, cutting it from the Gospel of Luke. This is known as script adaptation. Team number two takes care of the overall coordination of the whole process, which includes putting together all the needed players for the production. And team number three takes care of the recording process, and you can also call this team uh, the recordists. Personally, I had no idea what I was getting myself into after being asked by David to co-host this training event with Vi Ellie. But Jesus imparted to us his passion to eradicate Bible poverty worldwide. It was like when Jesus had the first disciples return from their first mission trip. Jesus leaped for joy. I believe that he is excited right now that we're talking about ending Bible poverty. He wants to tell us it's possible. You can do this. The partnership with Jesus Film advances the cause of ending Bible poverty now. We can take this to every village, every tribe, and every people and nation on earth. For the training, no previous experience is needed, and in the pictures, those pictures, <laughs> you'll see YWAMers like you being equipped to produce Jesus Film in eight languages in PNG later this month. How exciting is that? So friends, one week from today, next Wednesday, a team of eight people are arriving in Fort Moresby, PNG. Five of them are YWAMers, three of them for Jesus Film. They're going to go up into the Highlands and spend five weeks there. And at the end of that time, eight languages that never before had a gospel product in their mother tongue will have Jesus Film available. We, this is not a future dream. This is happening now. And this does not need to be a one-time event. We can do it in Africa. We can do it in Asia. We can do it wherever. They had one week of training, being mentored by the Jesus Film guys, eight languages by the middle of October. They aren't going to be just recorded and taken to Orlando to be do, for work on. In that 35-pound backpack, they will be able to do all the post-production editing. And before they leave the island, every one of those mother tongue speakers will have the Jesus film for their viewing. Isn't God good? All right. Well, who I'm about to introduce needs no introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's going to be really fun. So who here has heard of Calvin and Carol Conkey? Yes. Come on up. They're with Create International. Now, they are a super couple in ministry. Come forward. I call them a super couple in ministry. I call them the Brad and Angelina of the mission. <laughs> or, <laughs> or Beyonce and Jay-Z if you're into music. That's, yeah, okay, we'll stop there. <laughs> if there's one word I would put with, with this incredible ministry that Create International and the Conkeys do, it's something you hear constantly coming out of the mouths of these two, which is unreached, unreached, unreached. Um, it's something that we can never lose sight of, never lose track of. And every single time these guys get up and show us new tools and new resources for reaching unreached people groups, I just think, we're going to do this. This is, this is going to get done. And so why don't you share with us everything that, that, that you've got with you. You've got some fun toys. Calvin likes to carry his little portable radio around with him and keep up to date on current events, um, or maybe not. Uh, but why don't you guys just uh, show us what you brought us? Great. Thank you, Jill. We're excited to equip YWAMers with tools that are faithful to scripture and relevant to culture. On our IndigiTube site, we have over 300 films we've collected from many different agencies, and they're all tailor-made indigenous films sharing the gospel message through audiovisual means, and there are many multiple languages. You can type in the people group you're going to, and you can download free gospel films in the language and culture of the people. Some are a little bit shorter on mobile phones. It's 10 to 20 minutes, and you can just share the gospel message and then give them a Bible in their own language. And also, uh, just the challenge that God's been bringing us about Bible engagement, we decided to put on the next slide, uh, shows a page that we've added to this that uh, has downloadable audio Bibles or Bible portions in 1,300 different languages. So you can go to this site, download a film, 
for the people group you're going to and then download the Bible or portions that we have. Download it for free immediately and go on outreach and share the word of God. And also we're starting to, well, not starting, but we're developing some new gospel gadgets. This one I'm holding in my hand. It's very lightweight. I've got 30 gospel films on here and three uh, uh, Bibles in three different languages. I've got tracks on here, all kinds of stuff uh, on here. And uh, you can play it uh, for about four hours. It lasts on one charge, and it only costs $40. That's the best part about it. And it's got a huge uh, speakers in the back so that you can sit and show this to like 100 people at once easily. And, uh, oh, Carol's going to hold that while I show you. Oh, yeah, that's me <laughs> walking along. There's actually supposed to be sound, but it's okay. Uh, this is just showing one of our... There we go. This is one of our gospel animations. Um, and it has to do with Jesus, obviously. Yes. <laughs> has the Jesus film, all kinds of things you can put on these devices. And another device that I wanted to show you, yeah, is this, giving wings to God's word. It's called DoveStream. It's something we recently have put together for YWAM teams. And basically, it puts out its own Wi-Fi network. It doesn't need to have the internet at all around. And uh, it's battery powered. You can just keep it in your pocket. In fact, I have one right now in my pocket here. And you can, on one charge, it lasts six hours. Imagine yourself going on a train or a bus ride in India or, or uh, you know, China, a uh, long bus ride. And you can be actually evangelizing everyone that's within 300 to 500 feet in every direction from this little device, and they don't know where it came from. When they, <laughs> you can play that video, go ahead and play that video, and basically it's so simple, you just open up any Wi-Fi device, whether it's a tablet, iPhone, whatever it is, Android phone, and uh, automatically will come up on your network list, DoveStream. You just select that, once you select it, you open up any browser, and go to any web page that you want to surf to, it automatically takes you into this website, DoveStream, which is inside the little unit. And then all the films, all the Bibles, everything are right there available for people in their own language. And uh, so you're basically a walking evangelistic studio. <laughs> uh, and uh, so the great thing about this, too, is that it only costs 60 US dollars for one of these. And so we're wanting to get these devices for every outreach team that's going out to the least, last, and the lost. And imagine you putting the Bible that you, your team and your base is translated onto this and then taking it out on outreach and getting the Word of God out to people. That's the kind of future that we have before us. And it's actually not the future, it's now. So if you're interested in this, uh, at the Frontier Mission Expo from 1 to 2, we're going to be uh, selling them and sharing more. We have some Dove Streams that have floated around. Lauren has one. Different leaders have them. And so if you'd like to learn more, just come up to the Frontier Mission Expo, uh, Floor 2, B301, and we'll share more with you at 1 o'clock. Thank you guys so much. Let's hear it for them. <laughs> Who... Who would love to have these tools on their outreach teams? Wow. Takes the pressure off of face-to-face -face evangelism a little bit, too. <laughs> hey, thank you, Create International. I'm going to invite <laughs> Phil Porter. Phil, as many of you would know, gives leadership in um, Thailand. And Phil, you've got some amazing things in your hand. What are they? This is a source view version of uh, the Gospels and Acts translated into the most common Thai language so people can fully understand it. So if I understand, I'll hold two. These are the four Gospels and Acts, and they're in, they're in four different colors, and we'll see why in just a minute. But this is a YWAMers have translated for the first time in over 200 years from the original language to new version of Thai, and then YWAMers formatted it in this new way to encourage reading groups. I think you have a video that tells us about this. Let's just watch the video and we'll see some more. Here I am, and I'm giving you this book. And you may ask, 
what is this book? Well, we're giving books like this in four colors to all the people around you. It's in four colors because the text is in four colors with four speaking parts. If you look on the back, there are instructions. First, get together with other people who also have the book. Second, each person chooses a color and reads their part out loud. Third, discuss the questions that are on the back of the book. As you read and meditate on the words, they will fill your heart with life. And this life needs to be shared with others. So break off and start a new group and share this book with others. So we've had source view in English for some time, but the great creativity, this is the first source view in another language in Thai. Six other languages are being worked on right now. Tell us how it's being used. Okay, well, we were able to get it translated and printed just in time for the largest, um, the Thailand Congress on Evangelism with 4,000 church leaders and pastors, and we gave one to each one of them in, the, in their welcome packet. And since then, this has only been three months, We've got uh, a YWAMer up in Chiang Rai, Thailand. She's Fijian. She's just learning to speak Thai. She can't read this Bible herself, but she began meeting with some Thai university students and in a small group teaching them English. Um, she led some of them to the Lord, then she gave each one of them this Bible, and they started reading it, and they read for almost an hour before they stopped. And now they're sharing with, with other students um, and forming another group. So that's one thing that's been happening. I understand that... Uh the Thai Bible that currently is, exists is written for the king's language, and most people don't understand it. How many people still need a Bible in Thailand? Well, we have 68 million people in our country, and um, yes, most people can't fully understand the present version of the Thai Bible. So this is a language, this is a version that everyone can understand, even with a very low education. And a couple named uh, Jerry and Drirat Crow. She's Thai, he's American, they're Bible scholars, YOMers. They've been working on translating this Bible, and it's not even finished yet, but we have the New Testament, so we decided to start with this part because it's the story of Jesus and how to follow him in Acts. And so everyone can read and understand this version. Translation, innovative publication, and distribution systems, it's happening right now. Let's praise God. Give him a round of applause. Let's go on to the next step of our, of our process. And we've already started that. Uh, we translate, we publish in some form digital paper, um, and then we're ready to start distributing. We have a panel that's coming forward. So we're going to have uh, Jill in welcome this panel. All right. Come on. Well. These are some of my favorite people I get to introduce. So first of all, go ahead and sit down oh, in your oh, okay, we'll sit first. We're yeah, gonna come sit on. first. Come on, so guys. first of all, we have Giacomo Koji right here from YWAM San Jose, in. Costa Rica. And uh, we've got, whoa, I just almost ripped that out of my ear. And we've got Brett Curtis from YWAM Ships Kona. Tim Svoboda is actually next. Why don't you guys switch? <laughs> Tim Svoboda has been uh, championing urban ministries globally and is based at YWAM San Francisco. And then we have Andreas Nordley, uh, who is uh, coordinating work in YWAM Norway. Yeah. So all of these ones are here because they're involved in some kind of di uh, Bible distribution. And, you know, Bible distribution has been going on for a very long time. If you've read any of Lauren's books, you know that Back in the early days, YWAMers distributed Bibles to the American military in Europe. We just heard of a YWAMer in Perth, Australia. Her grandfather was, was thinking of taking his life. And as he was contemplating suicide, a YWAMer back in the early 70s handed him a Bible. He came to the Lord. His life turned around. Had he not lived, chosen to live that day, she would not be alive today, and we would be minus one YWAMer. Bible distribution changes lives. 
and we can see it, multi-generational impact. Isn't that wonderful? Now, Giacomo, you live in Costa Rica, and you have been uh, working on Bible distribution. How did this get started in your heart? Uh, it started with a couple in the northern part of the country. They took an offering among themselves, and they bought the first couple of hundred Bibles, and then it went viral from there. Uh, we started to engage as a nation, and we've done 150,000 Bibles already, and we've got 50,000 Bibles in storage right now, waiting for you to come and distribute them with us. <laughs> so you, you must have a warehouse full. How, how does this look like when you go to the Bible? Are you just passing out at random? How are you doing this? Well, we do it together. We work with Bible societies. We work with churches. We go door by door. We gather pastors. And the idea is that we don't go alone. We bring the body of Christ. We need to do evangelism, and we need to engage the church. So we have YWAMers spending 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes praying for people as they go door to door. So people's lives are really being touched. Absolutely. We've had great testimonies of people just being changed as they engage with the Bible on their own. All right. Brett Curtis. Who here likes YWAM ships? <laughs> Brett Curtis with YWAM Ships Kona. So you guys, you, you aim for these islands in the Pacific with no airport. You bring medical care, training. What does all of this have to do with Bible distribution? Or what, what's the connection between Bible distribution and YWAM Ships, particularly in Kona? Well, not just with YWAM Ships Kona, but everywhere. Uh, we get to transport you, the twins or the ships and the University of the Nation's campuses, we get to transport our missionaries to places that you can't get to without being on board a ship. No airport, no bridge, no roads, very remote, tough access places. So we're the transport for the Bibles and the people want to go, so you are all invited. <laughs> all right. And actually, I did put you guys in the wrong spot. You were right, CeeLo. Good job. Bravo to you. Um, yeah. So... Can I ask you a question, Brett? So how many places, how many islands in the Pacific can only be reached by the ship? There are no airstrips. There's no, no other ways of reaching them. Inhabited islands. According to Jill's map, <laughs> uh, 1,100 islands that are inhabited in the Pacific area, 900 don't have an airport. You can't get there without a ship, so we've got a big job to do, and that's what we do. So we really read not why we're together. All of us involved go. in this. Yes. You're uh, invited. Yeah, Tim, one of my one of my favorite guys. He's done a he's mapped out all of San Francisco and created an interactive map for people to access. He's in one of my favorite Omega zones, the San Francisco Bay Area zone. You are not just working in San Francisco anymore, though. You're working in cities around the bay, like in Fremont. We hear you've got some good testimonies to share about what's going on there and how you're a part of all of this. Uh, YWAM Reading uh, started the Bible distribution in the San Francisco Bay Area in the city called Fremont, which is the Bay Area. It's about 210,000 people living in the city, 120 languages amongst 210,000 people. And uh, the times that I've been out doing Bible distribution with them, I, generally I'll go to about 30 homes. And uh, those 30 homes that I visit, I maybe one or two homes, I might meet a person from the United States, a Western person. The rest are uh, Muslims or from India or from uh, Saudi Arabia or different countries. And so it's just been amazing. And well, just one quick story. Um, we were out distri distributing Bibles and an uh, Indian lady uh, came to the door and we began to share with her about uh, wanting to give her a Bible. And uh, she started talking to us. And as we shared with her, she said to us, would you like to come in? And we just kept on sharing with her and didn't really take it seriously. And then she stopped and she said, would you like to come in? And we said, sure. And so we went in, we sat down, and we said, can we pray for you for anything? And she said, no, I'm actually quite content right now. And we said, well, could we share the gospel with you? And she said, well, of course you can share the gospel with me. I'd love to hear that. And so we took some time sharing the gospel with her. And then we said to her again, can we pray for you? And she said, no, I'm quite content right now. Thank you very much. And then she said, could I go to church? <laughs> And we said, well, sure, you can go to church. She said, well, if I go to church, do I have to pay something in order to go to church? 
is there a membership fee? And we said, oh, no, 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 there's no membership fee. You can just go to church, and when the offering plate comes by, you don't have to put anything in it unless you want to. And she said, well, thank you very much. I've always wanted to go to church. And we said, well, is there anything we could pray for you for? She said, no, I'm quite content, <laughs> but I think I'll go to church. Uh, one last question, Tim. How have you seen just this... In this generation in missions, we look at cities in the West, and they've just been transformed by diaspora, immigrants coming from, I mean, unreached people groups are coming to places where the gospel is already here. Any, any comments to those of us uh, working in cities that we can reach out to these unreached people groups in our own town? Ray Bakke said, yesterday the cities were in the nations, today the nations are in the cities. And the opportunity that we have living in the cities around the world is that mission is not just crossing the ocean anymore. It's about crossing the street. God's brought the world right to our doorstep. And I'm excited about living in the city. And I want to see more YWAM bases start U of N campuses right downtown in the heart of the city and reach people at our doorsteps. All right. Thank you, Tim. And for those of you right. Australians, you, it's important you get familiar with the San Francisco Bay, Bay Area Omega Zone now with, you know, Jared Hain and this is, yeah, got to get, yeah, that's right, 49ers. Go for it, David. I had to plug that in for Danny Lehman out there who's listening. So. Okay. <laughs> this is an amazing time because of the, uh, the huge migrations in the diaspora. There are Bible distribution opportunities right where you live that you can touch the unreached. Um, Andreas, you live and work in Norway, and you guys have begun an amazing project in seeing Bibles distributed. Tell us a little bit of what's happened to date. Well, we decided a couple of years ago to uh, personally offer a Bible to every household in the whole nation of Norway. But doesn't everyone in Norway already have a Bible? No, they don't. We thought so, too. <laughs> But we done so what did you do? How did you find out otherwise? Well, we hired a professional research company, and we found out that less than half of the young people in Norway don't, they don't have a Bible. Wow. And Norway is one Everybody. of the most wow. Christian countries in Europe. So imagine how the rest of Europe is. Imagine. We need Bibles. So what did you guys do? Well, we, uh, there are 19 counties or territories, so we take one territory at a time. So we've done the northernmost uh, territory, 12% bigger than Denmark in size. We went to every 32,500 doors. We recruited Weimars from all over the world, including Lauren for two and a half weeks, went with us, knocking doors, um, offering a Bible. For and in in people, four weeks, we did every house. And did people receive the Bibles? Yes, a lot. Um, we were a bit um, concerned with people. You know, there are other religions who go door to door. <laughs> so we were wondering, <laughs> um, how would this be viewed? <laughs> uh, some Wyomers did this as their DTS outreach. They were kind of, they had to. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, when we were done, all everybody said, we want to go more. We want to do more. This is so fun. I get so excited, you know. A after this, and people and people received lots of them. After you finished the 32,500 homes in this county, did you do any research yeah. to see w what impact it had? Yeah, six weeks after the campaign, when we were done after these four weeks, we called around uh, more than 40 percent of the population in that specific county had read their Bibles. Wow. That's amazing. For more than 40 percent. Um, but listen to this. 80% of the population con confirmed that we have con we now consider the Bible relevant for our lives. 80%. Yeah. And 60% said con confirmed that if someone invited me to a Christian meeting about the Bible, I would consider going. Friends, distribution can be done. It can be done everywhere, and it has a huge impact. Amen. Can you please thank the panel? We want to talk for the next few moments about education. Once we have the Bible translated and published and distributed, it is uh, 
We have to do more. The job is not done. Because a lot of people can't read or write. There are 1.5 billion people on Earth. You can look on the screens on the side since the chairs are blocking it. 1.5 billion people on Earth who are functionally illiterate. So you know what? If we give them a Bible and we don't help them to learn how to read, it's like giving them a very nice bicycle with no pedals. It's absolutely useless. So they use all different kinds of technologies. We can use audio and video for those who don't know how to read. But I grew up in Bolivia, a missionary kid. And when I was young, Bolivia was the most illiterate nation in the Americas. 83% of the population did not know how to read or write. My parents, when they arrived there, it was illegal for someone who was not of Spanish blood to be educated. The missionaries broke the law by teaching indigenous peoples how to read so they could have the Bible. Several of the missionaries, not my parents, but others of their friends, went to jail. The law was changed, and the churches became the place of literacy education. Two or three afternoons after school, every week during my childhood, when I was in middle school, we'd go, home, go to church, and we'd have literacy classes, and all the young people would spend time with three or four or five adults teaching them how to read using the Bible as our textbook. When people had no interest of reading, when they came to know Jesus through oral stories, and they saw that there was even more to be had, they were motivated to learn to read, and so we had a literacy. Today, the figures have changed, and today, 83% of Bolivia is literate, mostly because of the work of missionaries and getting the word out before the, so people could read the Bible. We have to get the Bible understood and read. Many times it takes months, weeks, months, or years to become fluent in a language. So a number of years back, we began developing a program we call Uniscript. The dream was that we could see the Bible, uh, people go from illiteracy to literacy so they could read the Bible in the matter of a, two weeks or less. Well, we didn't quite hit the goal as we expected. We did better than that. In most of the languages we've done, after two days, people are reading the Bible on their own. And so, did you hear that? They go from zero literacy to being able to read the Gospel of John with ease in two days' time. Friends, this is an educational breakthrough. Today, we have over 30 languages in Uniscript. And currently, it is being studied uh, with such interest by the University of California, San Francisco, Harvard, Hebrew University in Jerusalem, and six or seven other prestigious universities around the world, not only for literacy, but for solutions for dyslexia, brain trauma, and deafness. We want to see what the Uniscript Research and Linguistic Institute is doing right now. Let's watch this video. In mid-2013, four tribal leaders from the Koriki and Yurama tribes, representing two different language groups in Papua New Guinea, attended a three-week intensive course to learn the Uniscript reading and writing system. The goal of this training was to not only provide literacy to these oral-only cultures, but to also provide a means of cultural preservation to these threatened languages. The first week with these teacher trainees was spent decoding their spoken language into a Uniscript alphabet. This included incorporating the cultural art forms of their tribes into the Uniscript symbols. The remainder of the time was used to create training materials to use in Papua New Guinea, a country of 8 million with only 17% literacy. On their return, the teachers taught over 100 children because so many parents from the tribes, understanding what literacy and an education meant to their children's futures, wanted them to learn to read and write. Over the next three weeks, the children received one hour of Uniscript training each day, Monday through Friday, for a total of 15 hours. At the end of that period, 
Every single child was literate and was able to read the story they had just written aloud to the entire class. Prior to this, some of these children had never even held a pencil. With the approval and backing of the Papua New Guinea Regional Minister of Education, URLI, in partnership with UCSF Brain and Neurolinguistics Labs, is now working on a scientific testing trial with control groups and a double-blind study that will validate the effectiveness of Uniscript in literacy remediation and as a tool for cultural preservation. The United Nations defines an illiterate person as someone who cannot read or write a short, simple sentence about their everyday life. This definition applies conservatively to over 1.5 billion people or one-seventh of the global population. Until now, reading and writing was a learning process that took months and years. For the first time in history, Uniscript empowers a person to read and write in a matter of hours in a world where knowledge and education is the key to breaking the vicious cycle of poverty. The need for literacy has never been more critical in giving opportunity to the world's increasingly disenfranchised and disadvantaged peoples. Uniscript is a literacy methodology that has proven to be nothing short of innovative, revolutionary, and life-changing. Exciting? I mean, really, neurolinguistics, yikes, are using things that we're creating in YWAM. Um, one of the leaders of this initiative is Marcia Suzuki. If you know Marcia, she is an incredible powerhouse in ministry um, for various reasons. Um, she also couldn't be here, so I will also be reading a letter, last letter of the day. Um, we're getting closer. She's female, so we're getting closer to, yes, these similarities. Um, she's currently in the Navajo Nation in America right now, uh, working on Uniscript Project. Uh, so this is from her. 2015 has been a year of amazing growth for Uniscript. We've developed 13 new alphabets in seven months. We now have practical alphabets for French, German, Baca, Mandinka, GNB Creole, Swahili, Hausa, Fuliro, Fula, Russian, Spanish, Navajo, and Maori. We're, we are especially excited about Maori because we were able to teach 150 Maori kids here in Kona in less than 30 minutes. Responding to a request of a group of six bishops from Cameroon, Togo, and Nigeria, and in partnership with African Bible Safari, we started expanding Uniscript literacy programs to that continent. The goal is to provide immediate access to literacy for millions of people who are disenfranchised and help to eradicate Bible poverty in Africa. We're also excited to partner with teams working in refugee camps across Europe who are ready to start using Uniscript alphabets combined with innovative methods of language teaching to bless refugees from many nations. YWAM Brazil is working in partnership with Brazilian Bible Society and the project A Biblia in Caracasa, aiming at eradicating Bible poverty in the country. Because of the huge rates of literacy, especially in the far and poor northeast areas, Jocum Brazil sent a team to Kona to learn Uniscript Portuguese and produce the first Uniscript Source View Bible. Hey, whoa, yeah. Uniscript Source View Bible. Okay, sorry, this is very exciting for me. Through the Pacific Va a Partnership, our team is involved in providing Uniscript alphabets and Bible translation teams to help bring literacy to over 400 languages only in the Pacific region. During the last three years, our team has received specific linguistics training to tackle this challenge. This is very specific linguistics training, I will have you know. We have so far offered seminars in articulatory phonetics, second language ac acquisition, cultural anthropology, phonological analysis, morphology and syntax, literacy and education, 
writing systems, alphabet development, semantics, Bible translation, discourse analysis, and text adaptation, which I'm sure all of you know what all of those courses are. Our team will be also taking a course in Biblical Greek in the first quarter of 2016 as a preparation to take the Bible to the Bari people of PNG. This is a Bibleist indigenous group in the highlands of PNG whose language has never been written before. Our team is going to do the language analysis and developed, develop a Uniscript alphabet for them in April and then work as Bible translation advisors to assist a group of native speakers to translate the first gospel in their language. These projects will be done in partnership with SIL as part of the Pacific Va'a partnership. This is a special project because our team will be involved with the entire process from oral culture to literacy and Bible translation in a matter of months. Also, our team is committed to work in partnership with native speakers of the Wadar language of India to translate one of the Gospels into their language. This will be the first book of the Bible translated right on our campus in Kona, and we want to dedicate it to Lauren Cunningham as a gift for his 80th birthday. That's not a bad birthday gift, right? There is a lot to do, lots of challenges ahead of us. Our team is growing. The Uniscript team is excited to be part of several other initiatives in the body of Christ to help end illiteracy and Bible poverty. Exciting stuff. Um, what do you think? She basically listed almost every continent, I think, of what's going on with Uniscript. Um, it's just... It's just unbelievable how they're doing this. I mean, in a matter of minutes, people, kids, learning how to read. Um, it's going to eradicate lots and lots of extra time in getting the gospel to every single person on this planet. And so what she and the Uniscript team are doing all around the world, I mean, it's really exciting times. And it sounds like um, they always want someone who's willing to help with Uniscript in a certain language. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you for your own language, um, then you can uh, get more information later about how to contact Marcia on that. So, continuing on in education, we will hear from Mr. Phil Liege. Yeah. Hi, Phil. Hi. So... Phil, Phil oversees University of the Nation's Extension Studies. I get to introduce him because I just did, in the spring, an online SBS module uh, as a full-time staff member. And so I got to do my full-time staff, 4K stuff, but I also got to spend 12 to 20 hours a week um, studying the Bible and going through the John letters and Revelation and... And it's, it's, it was awesome, and I thought I would have lost something not being in the classroom, but there really is so much value to being able to uh, sit at your computer and just completely give all of your attention to the Word. So I hear that there's some things you want to share with us, a nice uh, website here. So why don't you tell us more about online SBS and other, other courses? Yes, the, the passion I had was to take our biblical studies schools and make them accessible to people that weren't able to uh, take the, the regular course. And so in the online learning uh, with the SBS we have two streams. One stream is designed specifically for YWAMers that uh, those who are not able to take the regular school for whatever reason can still study part-time and integrate their studies with their ministry. The other stream is to serve the wider body of Christ. And in this stream, we have uh, many uh, from all walks of life who are engaging with us through the Extension Studies program with the online SBS. The uh, thrill for me is we are seeing around about 100 uh, students regularly engaging. And we are moving from English into French. We have the course been developed in French, in Arabic, and we're just working on Spanish, and we have Russian in the horizon, and we have an awful lot more that we want to do with that. <laughs> All right. And this is the website up here. It's What's the address for them to... If get? you go to uh, um, onlinesbs.org, 
Uh, you will find all of the information and you can also click a link and you can go to a demo site and you can actually test it out. Go in, look at what we're doing, try it out and see how it would work for you. All right, thank you. I have to say, um, you know, in, in my ministry, I've, you know, I sit at my desk and I make maps all day and for several years that's, that's just what I was doing. And then all of this talk about eradicating Bible poverty came up and, and we've, got to, uh, we've got to get the Bible into every home and I suddenly realized even me as a missionary, I don't know the Bible well enough. And, it's, and I realized it's absolutely imperative that no matter what job we're in as staff, that we, that we know the word of God um, in depth. And, and so this resource is an absolutely vital resource, especially for those of us who say, oh, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. There's always time to do this. And, and there's uh, so much great teaching on it as well. You have different speakers for the different books. Yes. And yes. Can I say that if you do do this course, you're not doing uh, a, an SBS light or <laughs> quick or you are getting the real deal. This is it. And uh, we've, had, uh, we've been doing it a few years and we've have had consistently good feedback from our students and uh, I commend it to you. All right, thank you so much, Phil, for all the work you're doing there at King's Lodge. A lot's going on, so all kind of resources being created that are new, and I love this family. It's innovation and so many different categories. Are you getting a feel that there's a lot more going on than we had ever imagined? And now we're going to hear some more. We're on our last step, Bible engagement, Bible motivation. We're going to have people come forward for another panel of five. Come on forward, everybody. Just clamber on here as quickly as you can. And this part is the most important. It, without the translation, without the publication, without the distribution, uh, without the education, this doesn't happen. But we do all of those things so that people can engage with God's Word. The goal isn't at the end that they read the Bible, is that they meet the God of the Bible. That as they come to the Word, there's a living encounter, an impartation, an experience with the God who inspired the word in ages past and who still speaks through it today. So let's talk a little bit about Bible engagement. Jill, tell us who's here. All right, first of all, we have Paul Childers who heads up Word by Heart, an incredible ministry that's going viral, I think, around the world. We have uh, Mark Evans uh, with Belt Bible Evangelism Leadership Training uh, with a focus in Congo, but will be telling us about other places. We have Dr. Scott Carroll with us, a world-renowned Bible archaeologist. We like to call him our very own Indiana Jones. <laughs> and, he, and we do it because he always gets so embarrassed when we say it, too. Uh, we have Kevin Sutter, who oversees YWAM Frontier Missions globally. And we have Guy Zeller, who uh, oversees King's Kids International globally. Yeah, so we have a pretty good crop of participants in our panel today. So I hope you see that this part of Bible engagement isn't just the interest of one part of our family, but just such diversity. So, Paul, um, a few years back, you came up with some, a really crazy idea about how to engage with God's Word. And you, you personally had memorized the book of Revelation, and then you thought, I'm going to do something more, and then... You thought, why not bring other people along? Tell us how Word by Heart got started. Well, I was in Hawaii in our apartment overlooking the deep blue of the Pacific. I was having a quiet time, and I was crying out. I'm like, Lord, you know, how can I be more like you? And just having one of those sort of times with God, and I felt him speak directly into my heart and say, memorize the New Testament. That should do it for you. <laughs> Until then, I didn't know that God spoke with a Kiwi accent, but he does. <laughs> And so, of course, I said, is that really you, Lord? And I uh, really felt that God was speaking to me. So I engaged in that. And people thought I was a little crazy. Um, but um, A little? <laughs> but I feel very home in YWAM. And, um, 
And very quickly, other people started to go, well, that's interesting. But it wasn't until I met Bruce Kuhn, former Broadway actor, was another providential thing where we began to see how this could be possible for everyone to do it, not just an actor or a YWAMer, but everyone can learn to a whole gospel by heart. And so in 2013, we started our first school. How many of you have seen a, a word by heart presentation at some point? Wow. Look at how viral it's gone already. And hasn't the word of God come alive for you in fresh ways as you see a brother or a sister uh, personalizing the word and sharing it like, like eyewitnesses, like they'd really been there. T tell, tell us a story of how this is changing people's lives. It's incredible. I mean, you know, people come up to me and say at the end of the school, you know, we just get people to learn a gospel. And they say, you know, I have experienced incredible healing. One guy came up to me and said, you know, I've struggled with lust and pornography for ages and I just can't beat it. Now I'm free, not even interested anymore. Hmm. People just get so stoked on Jesus that Jesus takes care of all the rest. Hmm. And so, so this is something that is just, you know, uh, a common thing that we see in the schools. Not teaching about any other stuff, just letting Jesus work on the hearts of people. And, um, and so that, yeah, that's an amazing thing. Thank you, Paul. All right. Mark Evans. Welcome. <laughs> So some people may not be completely aware about BELT. It's, a, it's Bible evangelism, leadership training, all four words that we really like to use in YWAM. Um, but you've created a course out of it. So maybe, first of all, a, a brief snapshot as to what you guys do in the BELT uh, sessions and courses. Okay, so it's actually biblical education and leadership training, but oh. that's cool. And so... Basically, what we're doing is trying to get people engaged in the Bible because it's great to have, you know, a Bible in the hands of a person and even though they know how to read it, but unless they're engaged in it and unless it comes alive and it's opened, then transformation won't happen, as, you know, David was saying. So we've been, uh, I'm a, I grew up as a missionary kid in Papua New Guinea and my parents a Bible translation uh, and did a translation in one of the tribes in Papua New Guinea. And, but I grew up seeing many Bibles sitting on the shelves and in box, boxes, unread and unused. And so God started to stir my heart to, how can we get these Bibles uh, opened up, taught in ways that is uh, uh, understandable and relevant? And so it actually gives people excited about the Bible and reading it and getting into understanding the God of the Bible. So. so obviously all these four steps leading up to this one, if even if they get it in their hand, they still need to know how to read it. So in, in your courses, in your training, uh, you, you then equip uh, locals. Do you have a, a testimony on, on, on some of the fruits of, of this training that you provide? Yeah, we've been doing this now for about 20 years. And we started in, in the language group that I grew up in, in Papua New Guinea. And we, as we started to teach the Bible in relevant ways, we saw people begin to change and we actually saw that move to the whole community and actually after that the revival actually started taking place so that the, my parents said at one point the whole atmosphere of the whole village totally changed and it was wow. awesome and in the, Con uh, in the Congo which is another major project uh, we're working with Wycliffe Bible translators to do Bible training and, en and engagement in 33 different, different language groups wow. in the northeast part of the Congo. Wow. So it's a very exciting opportunity to really influence a major part of that nation. 33 languages in yep. one sliver of the Congo. Isn't yeah. that incredible? Like, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. So we're going to be having a, an engagement uh, seminar up there uh, tomorrow afternoon. And so if you want to know more about this, because we've got lots of stories to tell and how we do it, please come up to the uh, Literature, uh, Resources, and Bible Expo tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock, and we'll see you up there. Great. What an amazing richness of diversity. Uh, Scott, it's such a joy to have you here. You've become a dear friend, and we're so grateful that you take your unique gifts as a uh, a leader in uh, understanding of Bible artifacts and manuscripts, uh, antiquities, and your heart for the Great Commission, you've come alongside us. It's our pleasure. It, Scott, you've, um, 
you handle manuscripts like few people do, but you don't keep those to yourself in a dusty academic quarters. You have a real great commission passion. What do you see these archaeological discoveries can do in the hearts of people in terms of motivating them about getting to know God's word? Right. Well, it's our pleasure to work with you and with YWAM, and we're, we're eternally grateful for all the wonderful work that all of you are doing and want to be of support to that in any way that uh, God may open a door to. Uh, there's a huge disconnect between people of faith and the wonderful artifacts that have been preserved uh, by God uh, for, the, for the church. And uh, there are a lot of reasons why there, there's a disconnect. And uh, part of it is because these things are sequestered by academia. And so they're kind of controlled by... Um, and we have the wonderful privilege of working with private collections around the world, identifying items of value, literally, uh, early texts of the New Testament, of, of the Old Testament. Uh, and, and then, after doing our due diligence and scholarship, working in a way that they can be made, um, have an effect on the, the life and mind and body of the church. One practical thing that we do is we work in uh, West Africa, at, uh, out of the University of Joss, and we work training PhD students uh, and recently uh, recent PhDs, gi giving them hands-on exposure to unknown things. They're, they're my Ivory League scholars, not Ivy League. Uh, <laughs> they're scholars who are being trained up in Africa and who will be leaders for generations there uh, as we build and give them opportunity to do this. We think the church as well, new believers, desperately need these things. Um, that, that have been preserved by... It, can you imagine a loved one going away on a distant journey and you've not seen them for years and years and years and they've left for you some special things to remind you of them? Hmm. Uh, that's really what these biblical artifacts are about. And so we try to m make them available to people. So, uh, so, so you may or may not know this, but if you get to know Scott, he'll talk to you about how he's found the most ancient documents of papyri from 1st and 2nd Samuel that he discovered uh, embedded in a mummy mask. <laughs> uh, that's a fun story to know yeah. about. Yeah, come by our exhibit, I'll tell you so all about it. So they're, they're <laughs> going to be at the exhibit. And Scott has helped put together the two largest private collections of biblical antiquities, manuscripts and artifacts in the world. And uh, so he's the leading expert in this area. And uh, you've brought some stuff with you. I certainly have. We, we selected some things. Uh, part of the problem is access. And by God's grace and uh, our good fortune, we have access to some wonderful items. And we brought with us some very special uh, Torah scrolls that tell the story of the indestructibility of God's word. Uh, it takes, it, and I know you know that. But you need to see these things because God has preserved them for you to look at. And so take five minutes, come by, read their descriptions. I put, had the fortune of putting together a display with the Vatican Library at St. Peter's Square. Uh, these tours that are here are, are second to none that we selected to be on display there. So please take them and have it embedded in your soul and be inspired by seeing them and uh, they'll be here all week, so we're delighted. Uh, this is a huge privilege. This is probably good, probably the best collection in Australia right now. Oh, is yeah. right here. In, uh, <laughs> is that right? He, he knows Absolutely. all the collections. <laughs> yeah. The best collection of Bible antiquities in all of Australia is right here at YWAM Together. Thank you, Scott, Pleasure. for sharing the gift and helping us to appreciate and treasure the valuable Word of God. All right. Yeah, thank you. Well, Kevin... Another person that when we look at you, we think unreached, unreached, unreached. Uh, not, not that you're Someday unreached. I'll be reached. No. Yeah. <laughs> so if, you, if any of you would like to share the gospel with Kevin later on. Um, yes. And oftentimes, uh, the work that you're doing is in nations where it's really hard to probably advertise all of the incredible things. You can't necessarily say the name of the nation, and we hear that you have a pretty incredible testimony about a uh, restricted nation uh, to remain nameless, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to let you run with your testimony. All right, great. Well, actually, I am not unreached. <laughs> I personally have been reached, and I, I have to add this, uh, I was a San Francisco hippie, 
And somebody gave me a New Testament one day, and I was searching, searching for spiritual truth. I sat down and I read it, and the words jumped right off the page. And nine months later, I gave my life to Jesus. So I'm not unreached, but somebody gave me those scriptures, and it changed my life. Yeah, but there are, there are millions and millions and millions of people who haven't had that experience, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhist people, and uh, we, as YOM, together, are working in at least 250 unreached people groups right now. And, I, yeah, I want to talk about just one real quickly. And I got a letter from one of our guys working with them and following your example, Jill. I'm going to read it. It's very <laughs> short, and it's in English. Uh, this, this guy is working with a tribe in West Africa. It's a nomadic Muslim tribe. They've been on the cover of National Geographic. Very interesting people group. I wish I could show you pictures and tell you more about them, but for reasons uh, that uh, you understand, I cannot tell you. <laughs> but uh, his na I'm, I've changed their names, uh, the names of the people in this, and I'm going to call our YWAM guy Joe. And uh, Joe just wrote to me about what's happening right now among this people group. I was there several years ago visiting. It was way out in the bush. This is a nomadic tribe, as I said. So they travel around with their animals and their families. And we got out with a vehicle and a generator. We showed them the Jesus film in their tribal language. And they really were interested. But they needed more. So our team worked at learning their language, learning their culture, wandering around with them out in the backsides of the desert, building relationship. And this is what's happening. Recently, he sent this to me a, a few months ago. Buuka came to visit me last week. This is what Cho writes. Buuka came to visit me last week. He needed more audio Bibles in the tribal language. These people are oral learners. They do not read. I gave him another 10 audio Bibles. There are many people living around Buuka who are interested in Jesus. One of them is a chief. I forget his name. Buuka says this chief is always listening to his audio Bible. The other day, Buuka heard this chief telling someone else about Jesus. <laughs> I hope Tumki is able to visit Buka for a week or so within the next month. If this happens, Tumki will be able to help Buka begin discipling the, this person and these people. So what's happening here, because of having the audio Bible in their own tribal language, Joe has already been discipling Tumki. Tumki is discipling Buka who will be discipling the chief, who is going to impact many, many people himself. All right. Hallelujah. And, Thank you so and, much, and Kevin. I, 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 I mentioned that we showed them the Jesus film. They love the Jesus film. On this audio Bible, not only do they have the scriptures in their own language, but they have the audio from the movie, so they can listen to the movie anytime they want. Wow. What a wonderful day to be alive. So many ways to get the word out. Guy, we're just delighted to have you here. Guy Zell is part of the King's Kids International Leadership Team. And you have a passion for engaging young people and families with the word of God. Tell us what's on your heart. Yes. You can read in Timothy that Paul was writing to Timothy, you have known the scriptures since your childhood. And that was part of making a leader. And I would like us to be aware that as early as we start, the strongest it will be in the life of people. And I remember this kid that was part of King's Kids a few years ago. He had to choose for summer if he wanted to go in outreach in Israel or in Albania because we had different outreaches in different places. So he prayed and he asked the Lord to show him. And he came up with the conviction he, ne he needed to go to Israel. And we asked him, so how did the Lord speak to you? And he said, I opened my Bible. And I never read about Albania. It's only written about Israel. <laughs> so we realized that children love to read the Bible, but they don't always necessarily understand what it's all about. And they need to be trained. And they need to, to get a love for the Bible. 
So we've developed with King's Kids several tools like Bible camps based on the SBS curriculum, for instance, like um, uh, home qualifying material where we train the children to read and love the Bible. We have one of our staff, Barbara Connor, who is here, who has done a whole series of uh, Bible reading, monthly Bible reading called Challenge. It's, a re it's translated in several languages already. And it's to train the teenagers to get the habit to read the Bible every day. And so we realize that we need to, to start with younger people as soon as we can and get them this habit and this love for the Word of God in their heart. Amen. Would you just thank this panel for being with us? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. You can uh, continue doing what you're doing, <laughs> impacting the world with the Word of God. We're going to wrap up here in the next 10 minutes, and we have several things that we can do in terms of application. We've walked through the five elements of the covenant, and uh, we want to take a time to be able this afternoon, now and into the afternoon, make commitments. But there's several different ways we can participate. When you walked in this morning, you may have noticed that above your head there are all these bottles. They look like this. And uh, they're hanging from the ceiling. Uh, th what I have in my hand is the 81st bottle. That means that there are 80 bottles hanging from the ceiling. Can anyone guess why there might be 80 <laughs> bottles? It has to do with a birthday mm. event, and each one of them mm. have a, a part of the scriptures rolled up inside of it, and also they'll have uh, a picture of blue tissue of the wave of wirewormers who will go have that to get the scriptures to all the world. What we are going to be doing this afternoon is giving you an opportunity. Those bottles will be accessible so that you can write notes and stuff them in those bottles. And those bottles will be given as a gift later on to someone this evening who's, turning, who's just turned 80. Each bottle is to mark one year of life, all together representing one man's generation. Each bottle contains a page, words from the scripture, words that bring you, Jesus' world, to the world. The word floats in the air and sails the oceans. It is the dream of a lifetime, the dream of one man teaching the ends of the earth with this message. These bottles also represent our stories, our ships, our missions, our bases, our efforts, our work, etc. They are fragile and transparent, just like us, so that the message can be seen, heard, and received. It is a message seeking a destination, a heart to welcome it. It is a vision, a dream, a mission that will go on. So we're going to have lots of fun this evening, and we've got several things that we need to do to prepare for this evening. You have now all heard uh, what the covenant is about. So, Jill, what are they supposed to do? All right. Well, because this is a birthday present for Lauren, just shut your ears just for a sec. Okay. Okay. We'll do this real fast. Uh, so, we would like to get a million people to sign this Bible covenant, this thing that David just read. Uh, we want a million people. Hey, why not? How about more than a million, right? To sign this saying that they commit to end Bible poverty. So if you have not signed this covenant yet, you can go to endbiblepovertynow.com. You can go on there, sign your name. There's a couple scroll, other questions. Scroll that I've asked down to before. the bottom of the front page. There you go. And uh, so if you uh, go on to this website, if, if you can get on and do that before tonight, that would be really great. But don't just stop at you signing up. Put it on your social media, share it on Facebook, Twitter, whatever it takes. We don't just want this group to be a part of the million. We want everyone who wants to see a Bible in every home be a part of signing this covenant. So please share it um, on whatever social media platform you use. So you might be watching this here or watching it by streaming. There are more than double the number of people on streaming right now than are, than are here. Um, and so... I want you to know as you do this, it takes actually less than 10 seconds. You type your name, you type the country, you hit the, the button that says, I commit, and you're a part of it. Then you send that on to somebody else. So friends, you can do this. If the 1,300 of us 
who sign it and each send it to 40 people. Everybody has at least 40 friends on some kind of social media. <laughs> and each of them send it to 40 people. Uh, we are over 2 million people. Okay? We are no longer in the age of uh, analog offerings. This is a digital viral movement. You share with your community. Let them pass it on to their community. Just send them to inbiblepovertynow.com. So you read the page that just has this covenant written, that the five points that we've talked about. Sign their name, country, and hit the button, I commit. Will you do that? Yeah. Can I see the hands of those who will do that? Lauren, are you going to do that? Uh -huh. He wants to see. He's okay. making sure everybody's raising their hand. <laughs> okay. That's great. So that's, that's very important. The other thing that you need to remember is you got an email yesterday about adopt a, a language for translation. 215 languages. Uh, those were sent out to everybody. 450 people. We know this because of metrics on websites. About 400 people, 50 people have actually opened up those emails and done something about them. So the rest of you, we invite you to do the same, okay? Do that this afternoon because we want to see at least 80 and hopefully more languages adopted to say, we'll help with an oral to oral translation. We'll help with a Jesus film production. We will help and we will make it happen over the next few years. And so sign up for the covenant personally and sign up for a Bible translation. Right. Now. Now. Okay. We're getting close to lunch. There's been so much that we've learned today, but the theme has been end Bible poverty. And what better way to sort of cap off this, this whole morning than to hear from the Bible, right? That's the ultimate word that can touch our hearts. Uh, so we have the great Paul Childers to come and do a five-minute word by heart presentation for us. So if you didn't... If you didn't raise your hand saying that, that you've uh, heard a word by heart presentation, now everybody will be able to raise their hands. So thank you, Paul. Thanks, Jill. So my task uh, this afternoon is to share what does the word say about the word? And I um, want to just share a couple of passages from the Gospel of John and Revelation. Being fascinated recently um, with scientists talking about the macro and the micro realities of the universe we live in. And uh, they realize that there is a, a, an incredible intelligence that underlies everything that we see. And I was reading this one article that said, now through the technology, we can look all the way back into the very dawn of time itself. So we know what happened to creation, but we still don't know who created it. But in the beginning, we know that the Word already existed. Amen? The Word was with God. The Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness could not extinguish it. The Word became human made his home among us. He was full of our failing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory. Amen? Amen? The glory of God's one and only Son. From his abundance, we receive one gracious blessing after another. Amen? Amen. The law was given through Moses. God's love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. Mm. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one who is himself God and is near to the Father's heart, he's revealed God to us. So the Word is the person of Jesus. The Word is Jesus' message. He says, I am the true vine. My Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do produce fruit so that they may produce even more. You've already been pruned and purified by the message that I have spoken to you. 
remain in me and my words will remain in you. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it. When you produce much fruit, then you are my true disciples. And this brings great glory to my Father. The Word also is King from the book of Revelation. I saw heaven standing open. And there before me was a rider on a white horse whose name is called Faithful and True with just as he judges and makes war. His eyes blazing fire. And on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that only he himself knows. He's dressed in a robe dipped in blood. And his name is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses, dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Can you say that with me? King of kings and Lord of lords. Just say that again. King of kings and Lord of lords. So who is the word? He is a person. He is a message. And he is our king. Amen? And it is with this word of God that we want to engage with all our hearts and make sure that everyone else has an opportunity. YWAM, this is a new day for us. And in closing, we have asked Lauren to come and just pray a blessing upon us that we would walk into a new anointing of faith and authority as together we commit to say we will do all that is necessary for the Bible to be translated published, distributed, understood, engaged with, and we will do all that we can. Are you, is that what you want to do, YWAM? If you do, would you just stand to your feet, just saying, is the, the here I, I am, send me. I want to be involved with this mode, and let us have Lauren give a closing prayer. What do you expect from this time? That's what I want to pray for, that God will create among us. Chung Ho had called a prayer meeting of 20 people to pray about information technology, IT. And during that prayer meeting, the Lord spoke to me and said, go and lay hands on David Hamilton. I want to give him what we've been praying for in the Uniscript we call now. So I called the others and we gathered around David and I laid hands on him and they did too. And we began to pray for a creative word to come from God to David. Now I thought maybe God could have given it to me but it would have leaked out. <laughs> He's got the ability to grasp what God would give him. And how long did it take for you to get a revelation from God that no one had ever gotten before? We had been studying for six years, but knew the problem and knew not the answer. And the moment you prayed, at that instant, the Lord gave the seed thought that led to what is known as a Uniscript today. You mean over the hour? That instant. It literally <laughs> bombed him. <laughs> It invaded him. Now, I want to pray that God will start to do this right across this gathering of YWAM together. And uh, you, when you hear the word of the Lord, go lay hands on them. And uh, you know, what, whatever the Holy Spirit is saying, it make sure they both, uh, both people understand as you're, why you're laying hands. But as you do so, I believe God is going to release things. In the beginning, God created how? With a word. 
with a word. And it was messy. It was without form and void. And then God put it together in order. And today, universities are discovering what God gave in a moment in Uniscript. We have 84 patents on it. And in a moment, God gave that. That literally the patent lawyer said he had never done anything so amazing in his life. He said, this will do more good than all the religions of the world put together. <laughs> He's not a religious man, and neither am I. We are relational. <laughs> Amen? We're relational. And so I want to pray. And as we pray, reach out to someone left and right to you, and let's lay hands on one another. Lord, you're a creator God, and you didn't quit creating. It's not just in the past that you were a creator God. You're a creator God today. Yesterday, today, and forever, you will be the same. And we pray, God, now that you will come upon us as your people. And as we lay hands upon one another, and as we have special times that you call us into for one another, we're going to see, God, your work of creativity that will go along with the other things that we will need to see accomplished what you give us to do. First, though, we need to hear that word of creativity, and then we will keep praying until it happens in the Spirit, and then we will glorify you that you're doing something new, and then we will tell others as you give us the prompting to do so, and then we will work, and work hard until the night cometh because when no man can work. But you've given us this time to work, but, Lord, we need need new creative words into this very gathering for the glory of God, the extension of your word into the nations of the earth. And you did it by a word creating heavens and earth. Lord, we would follow you. And with your words, you put in our, our hearts and on our mouth and in our lips, we would pray now that you will release those things that are on your heart to, to minister among us and do the downloads, Lord, that we will be seeing things, hearing things from you that we could never imagine before. And we pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. amen. If you believe it, say amen. amen.